Welcome to another edition of the Lifestyle Design Confessions podcast. We're here to help inspire you to go for it and live the lifestyle design of your dreams. Here's Rob. Welcome to another edition of the Lifestyle Design Confessions podcast. I'm Rob Murgatroyd of GetJetSetMoney.com. And today we have Justin Wright of LifeAfterTheCubicle.com. Justin started out like most of us did. He went to college, he got a degree, he got a job, and landed in a cubicle. He said, hell no, something's going to change here. We're going to get into all of that and exactly what he did to make the change. Justin, are you there? Yep. So without further ado, I want to ask you a few questions. Just by way of background, could you take us from graduating college to the moment when you were sitting in your cubicle and, you know, you hit that tipping point? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I graduated college and, you know, you kind of feel like, okay, I finished that whole part of my life and now you kind of wonder, okay, where are we going to go next? So, you know, I did what most people did and started sending resumes, you know, everywhere. And finally I got a job, you know, doing something that related to my degree. And, you know, at the time it, it paid very well, you know, I was so used to doing, you know, college type jobs that the money was definitely something there that it kind of attracted me. And, you know, I just, I took the job, started working there. And at first, you know, it wasn't so bad, you know, it's kind of nice having a real job, you know, what people call them anyway. And, Eventually, after about two years of working in a cubicle, I just, I started to get pretty much anxiety where I'd go into work and I was just like, there's got to be something else to life besides just sitting in this cube every day and, you know, working maybe an hour or two of actual work every day. And then the other six hours was just pretending to be busy, you know, waiting for the clock to hit five so I could finally go home. And, you know, I it just hit that point where I was like, something has to change. And so you made the change. You sort of refer to your lifestyle as a digital nomad. What do you mean by digital nomad? To me, um, digital nomad is, it's basically just somebody that can, you know, you can do whatever it is you like doing in terms of work. But being a digital nomad means that you can bring your work with you regardless of where you are. You know, if you like to travel, if you like to move a lot. So it kind of lets you be a nomad, but you can use the digital aspect to keep doing your, you know, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. And you can kind of move around and not have to, you know, be looking for jobs and finding a way to make money. So it's kind of a term that I really, I heard it from somewhere. There's a, a site like digitalnomads.com, I think is where I first heard it. And I just, I really liked the, you know, the phrase digital nomad. So I try to use it as much as I can on my blog all right, so so now you've got the freedom of time and mobility. Could you describe what it feels like to have that? And, you know, how has your life changed as a result? What type of stuff do you get to do now? And how many hours a week are you working? Um, well, first off, you know, it feels, it feels liberating. It feels like, you know, wow, I can finally, you know, I can do the things I enjoy doing. And it's not like you have a certain schedule where, you know, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have to be at work from this time, you know, and then you kind of got to plan around it. Whereas now, you know, I still work fairly good amount. You know, I probably work about 30, 40 hours a week, just like any other job, but I work with clients, you know, and I help them build websites and stuff. And the thing I enjoy is the fact that I can plan according to whatever it is that I want to do. So if I want to you know, if I want to go on a backpacking trip for a week, two weeks, I can just, you know, put all my work aside, pick it up when I get back. And it just gives me so much more freedom to, you know, kind of do the things I enjoy. And especially when it comes to moving. And that's one of the things that I've always enjoyed is I've always had a hard time figuring out where it is that I wanted to live. So as soon as I started making income, you know, through the internet, I started moving around a lot, so I kind of moved to Hawaii, and then I lived in Arizona, and then Texas, and now 
I'm in Florida right now. So it's kind of nice being able to hop around and just, you know, enjoy everything that there is out there to be doing. So you made the decision, um, how long ago to live sort of a digital nomadic lifestyle that was about a year ago, two years um, ago? It's been, let's see, October will be the two year anniversary of me quitting my job. So, okay. But who's counting, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So two years ago, and then, you know, part of, part of what you were able to do is you were able to get on a plane and, and where are you from originally? Where were you living? I am from Wisconsin. All right. So you leave cold Wisconsin and <laughs> you head out for sunny Hawaii. Yep. <laughs> How long did you live in Hawaii for? Um, I was in Hawaii for about six, seven months. Okay, that's quite a bit of time. Where did you live in Hawaii? I lived in Waikiki, you know, right in the heart of the tourist section of Honolulu. Okay, so so you pick up, you move all the way out to Waikiki. Is is there a moment where you're sitting out there going, "How did I get here?" I mean, like I'm <laughs> you're like I'm a cheesehead, you know? Like what? Ha like, how did this happen? Um, did you kind of have those moments? Yeah, I mean, I've had those moments. You know, it seems like every time I move somewhere, I'm just like, you know, how did I get to the point where I can be here versus there? You know, and you just, it doesn't seem like moving is a big obstacle anymore because it's so easy now that, you know, I move a lot that it's not like something where I have to plan ahead, you know, a year in advance and get everything squared away before I can go. When you move to Hawaii, was there a specific purpose in living Hawaii? In other words, did you just were you just curious and you said, I you know, I like the weather and I just want to check it out? Yeah. Um one of the things I hated about Wisconsin was the cold winter. So the first thing I wanted to do was go somewhere warm. And Hawaii just seemed like the great place to start, you know, and check it out. And at the time, you know, I wasn't really interested so much in moving abroad somewhere else. So I was like, well, I can live you know, all the comforts of the U.S. without actually leaving, you know. So Hawaii seemed like a really good starting point. Mm -hmm. Was it what you thought it would be? Yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed it. It's a little little too touristy for me, but mm -hmm. yeah, it was, I loved it. Okay. So it seems like you're sort of following beach locations. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Is there, a, um, is there a theme that I'm noticing in your life here? Yeah, I went to, I left Hawaii and I went, moved to Phoenix for two years where there was no water whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in Florida, you know, I'm kind of back to the beaches, but I'm already got my next move scheduled, which is going to be sort of away from the beach. So where's the next spot? Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Okay. I just got off the phone with somebody from Portland, Oregon, and awesome. they absolutely love it. <laughs> so I, I want to talk to you a little bit about lifestyle design. Um, obviously, you've read the Four Hour Work Week, yeah. Yep. All right, and so you've you know you've you've heard Tim use that phrase. He's certainly the one I, th I think who's attributed to it, but maybe somebody else did. I don't know. But he's certainly the one who made it famous. Everybody's got a little different twist on it. What does it mean to you? How would you describe?